let's go to Galatians chapter 1 for the little sermon tonight. I didn't get it through this morning, and I do not apologize for that. Um, because there's no end to the gospel. So we just have to stop and then pick up again and take another run at it. And uh, we're not in the, uh, you know, homiletics where we have to do everything by the book all the time around here. And really, I don't care about that anymore. I can do it, but, you know, there's no need. Uh, preaching is just conveying truth to people. That's really what it is. Uh, preaching um, moves your emotions. Uh, teaching uh, feeds the intellect. So we need both in the house of God. Amen. Amen. In Galatians chapter 1 and verse 6, Hallelujah. Paul the Apostle was writing this under inspiration of the Holy Ghost, and he said, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you into the grace of Christ into another gospel, which is not another. But there are some that trouble you that would pervert the gospel of Christ. A couple of weeks ago, we asked a question here at the church. And I'll take another run at it again this morning because you never get through with the everlasting gospel. The question is, do people go to hell for rejecting Christ? That's the question. I would say yes, but then there's something else that goes along with that that's more specific than even that terrible subject. And that is, people will go to hell because of unrighteousness. But religion tries to make its own righteousness, which God cannot accept. Anything man that does, God, anything that man does, God cannot accept it. Because we've been tainted by a problem called sin. Now, if a person can keep all of God's requirements to deserve to go to heaven, then receive eternal life, then uh, they would go to heaven. The problem is, no one can measure up. The rest of your life, never a wrong thought, action, or deed. And even if it was possible, you have a sin nature that's still in you that was not extracted at conversion. Therefore, that alone will put you in hell. But there is one way of escape. One way. There was one that could keep all of God's requirements that would satisfy God's demand for justice. And that was the Lord Jesus Christ himself. The only one. He met all the qualifications of the prophetic word. Now, sinners can try to measure up They'll fail. Or people can accept the one that fulfilled God's demands. Now, which one do you want? You can try to measure up and keep all of God's commandments. Or you can accept the one that did. This is the deal. When we accept the one that did measure up, then God gives us His Christ's righteousness. And therefore, we escape Everlasting destruction to start with. So I think I'll take the, the, the offer of eternal life to the Son of God. Amen. Now, you can only go so far and faith has to kick in. So where does faith come from? Well, faith only comes from God. You cannot conjure it up on your own ability. It comes from God. Now, Jesus accomplished everything that we need to be accepted of the Father God. Can I have an amen somewhere? So I don't have to really try to please God. We already please God because we accepted His Son. If you haven't accepted His Son, then you need to do that because that's pleasing to God. Amen. amen. Now, I want to go over to 1 John 1, 9 tonight because... Paul was concerned that 
the church, the church at Galatia. Everybody say church. church. The church at Galatia was removed from the gospel of Christ and accepted a perversion of the gospel. And he was highly troubled about this. Because you see, any other way than God's way goes the wrong way. Right. Let me say that again. That's, that's good. Thank you, Lord. Any other way other than God's way goes the wrong way. Amen. Now, there are two roads. All of us are on one or the other. There's no right in the fence, no middle ground. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for broad, broad is the gate, and wide is the way that leads to destruction. Before many there be, go in thereat. But straight is the gate, and narrow is the way that leads to the eternal life, and few there be that find it. Amen. Amen. The only way to get on the straight and narrow road is to come through the gate, which is a door, into the straight and narrow life, which is Christ's way. Amen. He is the way, truth, and life, and no man can come to the Father but by Him. Amen. However, we have a false doctrine going around in McDonald County and all, all over the world, really. They have perverted 1 John 1, 9. I refuse to change the Word of God for anybody. My soul's at stake. Now, John the Apostle wrote St. John, the book of Revelation, and 1st and 2nd, 3rd John. He says, if we, everybody say we. we. That is not talking about sinners. In order for a sinner to receive salvation, they must receive Christ. They can't name all their sinners. Come on, somebody. But Christians know when they mess up, don't they? Don't we? It should never happen, but it does happen from time to time. However, if we're in Christ, we're in covenant, and this is the deal right here. If we confess our sins, that's verbs, an act of sinning. He, that's God, is faithful and just. He's just. Just. He works through a legal system. God is faithful and just to forgive us our sins. John, the revelator, included himself in this passage. Who are we to exclude ourselves from this passage and say we never have to confess again? I got news for you, children of God. Sad to say, sooner or later, <laughs> you're going to have to admit, Lord, I'm sorry. Forgive me. Help me not to do it again. Amen. Amen. Doesn't have to be that way. Shouldn't never be that way. But sometimes it is that way. It's okay to be human. Now say amen to that. Amen. Here's the deal. He'll forgive us our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Amen. That's how you stay heaven bound. If you get in denial, then you have a spiritual problem. And it must be dealt with, and it will be dealt with the easy way or the hard way. Amen. Because God loves us enough to bring us to reality. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So then believers are to confess to God. Yes. You don't have to confess your sins to me. No. There's only one great faithful high priest that we must confess to, and that's Jesus alone. Amen. Amen. Now, sinners must receive the Savior because of their condition, which is unrighteousness. And if they don't hear the gospel, they won't have a chance to receive Christ. But even if they do not hear the gospel, they will still go to hell. Now, I know you don't like this. But Jesus said in St. John chapter 3, verses 3 to 5, you must be born again. Amen. No exceptions. Is this too rough? I didn't make the rules. 
There is one way to become born of the Spirit of God and be placed in the category as the Son of God, and that is the way of the cross. Now, we must understand tonight, and I think most of us do, that Jesus committed no sin. He never sinned one single time in 33 and a half years when he was in the physical body. He did not have a sin nature to deal with either. But he walked as a perfect man, anointed by the Holy Ghost. Amen. Even before he was anointed by the Holy Ghost at age 30 or thereabouts, he walked perfectly in the grace of God and never committed one sin without the power of the Holy Ghost. Hello, somebody. So he was the perfect prototype. He's the one that every knee will bow to one of these days. Now, I'm glad I've bowed my knee to him a long time ago, and I still do, because he is not only a Savior, he is Lord of all. all right. Amen. Amen. Believers, then, Jesus committed no sin and had no indwelt sin nature. I know some of you don't like this, but the truth is we all have a sin nature. However, it will be extracted at the rapture. Amen. The, it's synchro meshed, intertwined with the flesh some way. We got it from Adam. When Adam fell, we all fell and inherited the problem. If you don't think your children have this fallen Adamic nature, just watch them when they're in a cradle, want now the cradle, mommy, 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 and they try to manipulate the parents. Now, I don't know young people here do that. No. Jealousy, things that we can't see are still real. Amen. If you think your children are little angels, and I, I know my grandchildren are, you put two of those little kids in a hot tub, bathtub, and put one ducky in there. <laughs> It'll not be long. They'll be fighting over that ducky because of the problem. What's it mean? It means that the human being is prone to do something wrong and don't know how to fix it. Well, of course, the Lord has the answer. But now back to the Savior... He committed no sin in 1 Peter 2.22 tonight. So he's the one we look to. Amen. Jesus is the one we look to. Who did no sin, neither was guile found in his mouth. Amen. He was a sinless, spotless Lamb of God. It had to be that way to be the perfect sacrifice that God could accept. On our behalf. So in a very real sense then. God gave the sacrifice for you and me. We had nothing to do with it. He loved us that much. To send his own son to go to the cross. And die on the cross. And become cursed on the cross. Absorbing our sin. In his own body. On the tree. Amen. He had to willfully do that, and it's beyond my comprehension. It was a supernatural transference of our wrongdoing onto the Lamb of God that did nothing wrong. Could you imagine the anguish of that? I cannot. It's beyond my comprehension. Someone said, well, could Jesus come off the cross? Well, I don't know. If he would have come off the cross, there'd be no hope for us. The fact is, he didn't come off the cross, and that's what the Scripture teaches. That's what was prophesied, that he would die on the cross, which he did. So I'm not going to try to figure that question out. It's irrelevant to faith. Amen. But you see, believers still have an intertwined nature to deal with. This nature is not revived by simply sinning. It's what makes the person sin. Oh, we blame the devil. Well, it came from the devil. But then there is a way to overcome the problem. Only one way. 
We simply have to place our faith in something other than ourselves. Rules, regulations, do this, don't do that. No, we have, the only way we can overcome the problem that we all face. You see, the one that looks back at us in the mirror is the problem. Can't blame the devil. Oh, he, he, he started off and the fall came in because of sin. And we inherited the problem through the loins of Adam. The only answer in this world is we must keep our faith in the cross of Calvary. I will get it across one of these years to these ears that listen to me. What the devil wants to do is to sidetrack our faith. In Romans 8, 13, let's look at this tonight. Hallelujah. If we live after the flesh, you should die. But if ye through the Spirit do mortify the deeds of the body, you shall live. So the Holy Spirit then is very much involved with our victory that we will experience in this life. Without Him, we can do nothing. But He was sent on the day of Pentecost to help us overcome what we couldn't overcome on our own. That's the grace of God working in our lives. Now in Romans 6, 14, another verse of Scripture tonight. And I'll have you read this out loud with me. King James, please. Are you ready? Go. For sin shall not have dominion over you. You are not under the law, but under grace. All right. Another translation would read, For these sins shall not have dominion over you. Because you see, in this scripture, sin is a noun and not a verb. Right. Therefore, the sin is the nature we got from Adam that is reckoned dead, but still in our being. There is a difference between sin and sinning. Sin is what causes a person to, to commit Sins. And the church has majored on how to stop sinning with no answers because they haven't dealt with the sin that we got from Adam and it wasn't our fault. Right. Well, how do we overcome it? There's only one way to overcome it. That altar signifies death. Amen. We're already dead in trespasses and sins, the Word of God tells us. So what's the answer? Well, Jesus is the answer. Amen. The only answer. Amen. Thank God he is the answer. Now, once a person receives Christ as Savior and Lord, repents of sins and asks for forgiveness from God, the Holy Spirit, who is the workhorse of the Godhead, cleanses us from all sin, utilizing the blood of the Lamb that was shed on the cross of Calvary, and we have been declared justified. That means just like we've never sinned. God works through legalities. Amen. Amen. And Christ was the one that came and appeased the wrath of the Father God that was on the human race. The condition is, for the blessing, you must accept the Son. That's the deal. Everybody, no matter what color your skin is, where you're from, the message is the same. You have to admit that you've sinned and you're away from God. But God has sent His Son to restore the fellowship with the Godhead, and you can be restored, receive life eternal, Amen. And become born again. Your sins being washed by the blood of Christ. Being indwelt by the Holy Spirit. You become a child of God. A Christian. 
Doesn't matter what kind of church you go to. But if you become a Christian, you will be in the only one church that God acknowledges, and that is the Christian church. Amen. That's not a denomination. The name doesn't mean anything over the door. It's what's believed and preached and accepted in that congregation. That's what really matters. Jesus said if someone tries to come up to God another way, he's the same as a thief and a robber. Yeah, that's right. Jesus said very plainly in St. John, I am the way, the truth, and the life, and no man comes to the Father but by me. The only way to come to Christ Jesus is a trip to Calvary where he died on the cross or you cannot be saved. You know, the old Baptists used to preach this way. Thank God for them. We got too many Christianettes pussyfooting around, acting like that they're right with God. They're not even saved. They're professing ones. And it's disturbing. Who has bewitched you? Another gospel has got into the church. And Paul said there is no other gospel. We might look at that here in a minute. But if you're a Christian tonight, you're in the grace of God. Amen. Sin shall not have had dominion over you. It shall not dominate you because you're not under the law but under grace. Now, if you want sin to dominate you, just put yourself back under the law and try to please God by law keeping and you've fallen from grace. No, that won't work. God can't accept that. Because it's a mockery to the Son. Amen. Amen. Now, how do we get in the grace of God? Well, it's very simple. We just simply put our faith in Christ. As we said this morning, all men do not have faith, what the Word of God taught us. So faith comes when you hear the Word of God. Primarily, the gospel. Amen. When the gospel is heard... God gives every person that hears it faith. Amen. It might be a mustard seed, but it's still faith. And it's faith that is saving faith if they will accept it and give their life to Christ. Amen. There's no other way. In 1 Corinthians 2 and verse 2. Hallelujah. Let's look at this tonight. Praise the Lord. This is what Paul said. I have determined on nothing among you save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Now I'm telling you, Paul could turn on the theology, everybody. He was being groomed to take over for Gamaliel, the theologian of that day. And yet, all of it was thrown out. And he said, I've determined on nothing among you save Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Because that is the primary message the church should be holding to. Now, let's go back to Galatians 1 and 6. Did I stop off there a while ago or did I forget about that? You don't remember. Well, let's go back then. Maybe I did already stop off there. Well, then let's go back to Romans 6, 6 and we'll stop off there then. See what we can dig around with, okay? Hallelujah. All right. Know this, that our old man is crucified with Christ. So the old nature that we're addressing, that the problem causes the problem in people, is that it needs to be crucified. The old man needs to be crucified. Our old man is crucified with him, or with Christ, that the body of sin might be destroyed. That word destroyed is a little abrasive. It means to be rendered powerless or ineffective. So if you're a Christian, the old nature really has been crucified with Christ. That is the only way that you can ever begin to walk in newness of life. Water baptism will not do it. 
that we should hit, we should not serve sin. Amen. We should not serve sin. See, this sin really is the problem in the church. And man has come up with different kinds of methods, formulas, incantations to give a false victory to the congregation. There is no victory other side other than Christ and Him crucified. Right. It must be accepted. It must be held to. Our, the devil will sidetrack our faith and they will wind up shipwrecked. Paul even went so far as to say this in uh, Galatians 2.20. I know most people can quote this. He said, I am crucified with Christ. Not I was, not I will be. I am. That's present tense. Crucified with Christ. Now what in the world does that mean? That means I live, but yet not I. This is where <clears throat> new life starts. I wonder how many churches that are named new life actually understands what I'm trying to bring forth tonight. You don't receive it, but only one way. That is the way of the cross. He said, I'm crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I. And the life which I now live in the flesh. Yes, we're in the flesh, but we're not working the works of the flesh, I hope. If we were not living in this flesh temple, we wouldn't be on the earth. God needs someone that's alive spiritually and living in the flesh temple. He only works the redeemed ones. Redeemed ones have been given the honor to carry the message that saves, heals, and fills the Holy Ghost and sets people free from demons, get them on the way to glory, and ultimately make heaven their home. Then inherit all the things that Christ has made for us. I live by the faith of the Son of God, he said, Paul said. I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me, gave himself for me. Amen. Then we go to a very complicated scripture tonight and need not be. It's just been twisted by the devil and caused much grief in the body of Christ. And it's really quite simple, really. Romans 6, 4. Hallelujah. You see, it's a devil's strategy to pervert the gospel. That's what the devil does. Perverts the gospel. Who has bewitched you and not obey the truth? Uh, let's skip that. I want to come back to that. I want to go to another scripture. Let's try uh, 2 Corinthians 11, 3. Amen. We've got to make a point here to our pure minds tonight. Hallelujah. <clears throat> 3 and 4. I fear lest by any means that the serpent beguile Eve through subtlety, so your minds should be corrupted from the simplicity of Christ. God is not the author of confusion. He's made the, the, the salvation message so simple, a good theologian can just mess it up. For if he that comes preaching another Jesus, now here it comes, here's the warning. If he that comes preaching another Jesus whom we have not preached, or if you receive another spirit whom we have not received, or another gospel which you have not accepted, you might bear, bear with him. So he's saying, don't put up with anyone that's coming to you preaching another Jesus and another gospel. That's what he said. Because if the church receives another Jesus and another gospel, they also receive another spirit, not the Holy Spirit. So what is another Jesus? What is another gospel? Now listen to me very closely now. Another Jesus and another gospel is any other way than the cross. Amen. That's right. <laughs> it's so simple we can mix it up. 
No. It's only one way to be saved, and that's the cross. Only one way to be sanctified, and that's the cross. Only one way for victory, and that's the cross. Only one way to receive the blessing of the Lord, and that's through the cross. Amen. There is no other way. Any other way is another gospel. I want to get that across. Are you understand what I'm saying? So I reject any other way than the way. Amen. And I'm staying in by the grace of God in the way. But you see, it's a devil's strategy to pervert the gospel. Pervert it. Twist it. And he uses traditions of men to do it. Yes. Oh, God. We need to get rid of all the idols. We don't have idols. <laughs> The devil will change the word. Did God really say? See, I learned this many, many decades ago. If the devil can't get you to reject God's word, he will say, well, okay, all right. I'll tell you what. All right, that is the word of God. I agree with you. But I'll tell you what it means. Shut up, devil. I'll interpret, for, interpret it for you. No, you're not the Holy Spirit devil. No, 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 no. Uh -uh. See, that's the way the devil works. Then he'll put suggestive therapy and wrong thoughts in your mind. Now, our mind is being saved, being uh, changed. I wish some people that come to church, I could just nuke their mind like a computer and reinstall everything. It doesn't work that way. Amen. I'd have to nuke my mind first, okay? But on the other hand, we do have the mind of Christ, right? Now, this can be enhanced as your word level increases. We only know God through the word. That's the main way. You cannot know God by going out here and hugging this tree. No. Years ago, these guys were selling rocks. They made millions of dollars selling pet rocks. A pet rock. Put it in your house. That's my pet. You know, people will buy anything, won't they? Well, they'll fall for about anything, too, you know. Well, now let's go back to Romans 6, 4, and we're going to quit with this one tonight. Hallelujah. Any other way of salvation rather than Jesus and the cross is not the gospel. That's right. And yet, in our fair country, and Africa too, I've been there many, many times. Many, many, many times. The problem is the same. Because people are the same. But I got news. God's the same too. He doesn't change. His methods are the same. He convicts of sin, righteousness, judgment. He empowers his children to overcome the enemy. But if we fail to confess, then we become stunted. Amen. That's the reason we need to be like David. Quick to repent. Quick. Quick to repent. I'm always telling people, take the fig leaf off. God already knows. Just take it off. See, we got to understand that God is for us. He loves us, but he wants us to want him. That's all he's ever wanted. That's all he's ever wanted. Don't turn him away. You know what causes people to turn God away from their life? Sinning. And the sin nature doesn't want to submit. I got news for the sin nature. He's crucified, reckoned dead. Amen. Now he's not extracted. And if you begin to feed that rascal, he will try to revive. When he revives, you're going to really have problems. The only answer is to let him stay crucified. 
to walk in newness of life. There is where we learn how to be led by the Holy Spirit and used of God and anointed of God. One good thing about this problem that we all have, when the trumpet sounds and we're resurrected, guess what? The old man stays down here. He can't. Listen, I've been saved 42 years, I think. The old Randy cannot be resurrected. (laughs) He was evil, devilish. Only the new one. Are we walking in newness of life tonight? The divine nature. So that's the reason you've got to be born of the Holy Spirit. Your, 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 Your spirit has to be resurrected to walk in newness of life. That comes by the new birth. Amen. Then you're in the grace of God and rapture ready. Praise God. Stay in the will of God. Don't deviate from it. Amen. Hold fast to your home church where God's assigned you. You're important. Amen. You're important. If you don't know where to go, pray. God would tell you. I always tell people all the time, if you're looking for a church, go to the preacher and ask him what he believes. If he hem haws around, get out. Amen. Amen. We got to know what we're talking about or just sit down and be quiet. Amen. We're all still learning. We're students of the scripture. And so the last scripture tonight is one that is so dumbfounded to people and I don't know why other than at one time I was confused myself and perhaps in years past taught this incorrectly. You see, when we're studying the Bible, If we get off in a little area here, it doesn't mean we've lost our salvation. But the Holy Spirit will correct us. Because the truth is what keeps us free. How many wants the truth? I look at these young people tonight. You're raising them right. Zayla, she's taking a nap there on mama. But that's the way to raise them. Amen. When I was young in that age, My parents took me to a nightclub and made a little pallet on the floor and we slept on the floor while they went out there and did the boot scooting boogie. (laughs) Whatever that is. This old smoke filled bar is something I'm not used to. Don't you hate that stuff? Billy, I know you like it, but I mean. One guy, he said, I feel at home because my wife put a neon sign in the hallway. (laughs) God help us, you know. That's all the world's got, people. (laughs) By the way, stay out of the casinos. Oh, they got good food there. Yeah. Oh, I know. But the other stuff's no good. Hmm? Signs that, oh. Now, I'm having to deal with the sin nature. That gives you the fever to go gamble. Come on, somebody. Well, you know, I might win. They'll let you win just enough to hook you, and then you'll spend all your money every Friday night. Rob God on Sunday. I advise you don't do that. Amen. Amen. That's like saying, well, I, I smoke a little weed, but not too much, you know. It's just enough to make me feel better so I can sleep good. I'm nervous. Blah, blah. <laughs> there's, the, there's, there's something about an alcoholic, you know. you got to be drunk to be around them. <laughs> Drinking's wrong. Getting drunk, you know, will keep you out of heaven. Yeah. And so will weed. Right. So will meth. Hello, somebody. I don't want my teeth rotting out. Wake up. Right. I don't know what meth is, but I'll tell you what. I can sure spot it when people are on it. Years ago, I'd sit in my dad's bar, just a kid. I'd watch these guys come in and cry on their beer. Now, I know nobody's ever cried in your beer. No. 
I hope you never, one guy said, oh, I've never tasted alcohol in my life. Well, you holy thing, you. You're so holy by never even smelling alcohol. You're no more holy, holier than the drunk that was born again. Right. Self-righteousness, this is pride, and that goes before a fall. So I suggest you keep quiet. Amen. They're preaching all right. Do they preach this way in the islands? They probably do. I don't know. They do in Africa. I preach pretty rough sometimes, and the guys over in Africa, they listen to the podcast, and I said, well, you know, I have to preach pretty rough sometimes. He said, I like it. <laughs> I like it. <laughs> okay, well, so you like it. A lot of people don't. Well, I can't help that. Tell my boss, all right. But I watch those guys crying in their beer, and they always get around to this. I love God. I used to, I used to go to church, I, you know, but I just, I really need God. And that's all they talk about. Right. Most of them backslider, backslid, backsliders. That's all they talk about. Dear God. This one alcoholic, he, he'd passed away. He was a genius. He knew astronomy. He could take bailing water and a pair of pliers and fix anything. He's just a genius. But he was a drunk. All he wanted was a pint of vodka. That's it. That's all he wanted. So he died. And I, went to, I felt so bad about it. And I went to see his wife over in Boulder City. Anybody know where Boulder City is? Yeah. Do you? I'll pray for you then. <laughs> I said, I went up the door. I said, ma'am, I'm, I'm sorry that uh, your husband passed away. She said, I'm glad he's gone. Dear God. I said, okay. I just walked off. I don't blame people for going to the bottle, going to the dope, trying to find some relief, trying to find a crutch. Yeah. I don't blame them. What else they got? Right. But child of God, you have the Lord Jesus. Say amen. amen. You're the righteousness of God. Your name's in the book. Amen. Yeah. You're heaven bound. The Holy Spirit has been assigned to your life. You've got angels watching over you. You're blessed coming in and going out. You're going to be the head and not the tail. You're going to inherit everything that God has made. How can you go back to the bottle? Well, I'm depressed. Well, God will give you the, you know, joy of the Lord for the spirit of heaviness. A lot of these things are taken off of us when we get into the realm of praise. Praise. Praise God. But this last verse now. Another scrambled egg deal. Well, that's okay. We are buried with him by baptism into death. All right. Brother Money, we've dealt with this for months and years, and still people don't get it. Let me make it real simple. It is not water baptism. <laughs> and yet, most churches, well, you got to get baptized. Well, you know, I watched one guy on the internet, he was getting baptized. And that preacher must have prayed 20 minutes, you know, and finally the guy, he started dunking himself, squatting down, forward, <laughs> forward, forward. They were throwing water on him like this, forward, forward. <laughs> Yeah, you got to love people, you know. But. Water baptism is symbolic of death. You can't be half buried. You've got to go all the way under. Amen. Yes. Right. You're dead. But when you come up, it's symbolic of resurrection power. Yes. It's all points back to what happened the moment you became a Christian. We're buried with him by baptism in the death. Where did Jesus die? The cross. We're crucified with him. We're buried with him into a baptism of death. Are you getting this? I can't make it any more simple than this. I don't know how. But 
like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, we should also walk in newness of life. So in the conversion experience, in the new birth experience, the born again experience, you actually were dead in sins by the grace of God. You died when Jesus did. That's what it means to be baptized into his death. But Christ arose. Easter's coming. Christ arose. Passover's coming. And we all know he rose from the grave. Victorious over death, hell, and sin. And he has all the power and all the authority today. If we're in Christ, we were already resurrected with him. When you become a Christian, you're resurrected in a moment of time. The only thing that remains is the physical. Are you getting that? So in that regards, then, we're sealed with the Holy Spirit to the day of redemption, and that is a kind of first fruits, the down payment. How many has ever bought a new car? Anybody? How, uh, a new car, new pickup? Okay, a different one. You haven't bought one yet, kids. Have you? Maybe you have. You're from Nashville. I don't know. Well, let's say you bought a new motorcycle. All right, brand new Harley Davidson. No, Honda. <laughs> but you put a down payment on it, right? Which means that's mine as long as I make the payments. Well, God has given us the down payment to eternal life and salvation. If you have the Holy Spirit indwelt, you have the first fruits of the Spirit and everything else will follow. Everything. The last thing to follow is glorification. Our physical body will be changed in the twinkling of an eye, one twentieth part of a second. When all rise to meet him, we'll all go to greet him and have that marriage supper in the sky. That is coming. That is the next event. But nobody's going to make that event until you've been born the Spirit of God. Amen. So I hope everyone here tonight has received the new birth. I believe everyone has, but only God knows for sure. Let's stand to our feet tonight. That's enough scrambled egg message tonight. We'll try to get back on track next week, but I doubt it. <laughs> the point is, the gospel is the only way. Jesus, the earth and finisher of our faith. Amen. Is everybody ready to go to the trumpet sound? Yes. Could you imagine? Here we've had this panic because of a little virus. Could you imagine trying to store up enough for seven years? Like one guy said, a friend of mine, he said, well, he said, you all are buying up toilet paper and we're buying up ammunition. <laughs> what do you mean? Well, because we're going to come and get the toilet paper. Because we're... <laughs> <laughs> God, I don't know, man. <laughs> but could you imagine trying to ride this thing out seven years? No food, no water. Lights shut off, no gasoline. Huh? But you know, in the tribulation period now, babies are going to be born. It's seven years. You're going to watch your babies starve to death? People are going to say, oh, I'll take the mark. Just give me some food for my kids. And that I'm putting you in hell. But here's the good news, child of God. You won't see that. You will absolutely not see that if your name's in the book of life. Because God has saved us from the judgment that's soon to come on this earth. And I mean, right now they're working for a one world government, a one world currency, and the one world church is almost upon us. Let's hold to the gospel. Don't stray from it into another gospel lest we lose that one of God. I won't do it. It's Christ and Him crucified and that is it. There's where our faith remains. Could I have an amen from one or two? Amen. That's where we are. That's where we're going to stay. Are you there tonight? Amen. 
Then shout amen about it. Praise God. You're chosen. Hallelujah of God. God bless your hearts. 